<laughs> really? I don't know why. I don't know why from what you say. Ideas around correcting things That's like... A... Ah, ah, ah. What I think would be a great thing is if we can edit out being an asshole. We have to ask where these ideas of perfection come from, and every age and every society has its own ideas about what it considers in people desirable and undesirable. It wasn't that long ago that people considered homosexuality such a problem that if we could identify a gay gene, they would screen their children for it. And now we find that abhorrent, rightly abhorrent. But I, you know, where do we draw that line? People say to me, I have had someone say to me, of an older generation, I should say, you know, how would you feel if you had if your son was gay? Um, you know, would, wouldn't you rather he was not gay? And the slippery slope of that is, well, what else would you rather not have in your children because it would make their lives harder? Me being brown makes my life harder. Would I want to edit that out, knowing the society that I live in? Of course not. But these ideas about what is desirable and undesirable, what will make your life easier for your children and not easier for your children, we have to think very carefully about. And the reason why I said before that I would not want to edit my son or airbrush my son before he was born is because I'm a North London mum and I understand fully what you're saying. We want the best for our children. We give them every opportunity in life. But the question is, what are we shooting for here? And what we're shooting for is society's idea of what success is. Success is having a great job, doing really well at school, earning loads of money. Well, what if our our idea of success is whatever kind of child we have and whatever their talents, they are happy with what they have and living the life that they have and you know, content in whatever skills and capacities that they have and they enjoy them. I mean, that is the happiness I want for my son and the success I would like for my son. Okay. See? Look, I agree with you, but I think at the end of the day, this is fine words, but the question is going to be where the decision point is taken. And so far, the way you've been talking is as if you're going to leave it to individuals to hopefully in some kind of ethical framework coming from somewhere will make the right kinds of decisions. And the reason why I bring the state in has nothing to do with perfectionism or anything like that, but there should be some kind of uniform policy within which we can tolerate, you know, we can explicitly say we tolerate and perhaps even encourage a certain variety of options. Okay, I, this is what I'm talking about because at the moment this, the state is not involved at that level to actually, you know, articulate this. And you're just hoping the market allows it. I'm not hoping anything of the kind, Steve. For one thing, I don't think we'll be able to edit in the way that you imagine we'll be able to edit. And um, secondly, no. just because the state is not involved, that doesn't mean there are pressures on people that are driven by the way society and culture works. But the state ought to well, take responsibility. Well, I'm kind of confused a little about why you're saying the state isn't involved at this point. because. I mean, the reality of it now is that it's been pretty much agreed upon from regulatory levels in both the U.S. as well as the U.K. and other and the E.U. that it's unacceptable to make gene edits that would be considered enhancement. Right. That and they should really that they should be. Focused. But that's going to be overturned. I mean, isn't that the premise of this whole discussion? That that kind Why? of idea is going to be overturned. We don't Why? know that. Well, we don't know that. Because it, because of <laughs> well, China, be, basically. Well, no. But to be clear, too, it's and then just so we have this that we are all aware of this differentiation. It, there's therapeutic ideas around correcting things that's like a, ah, 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 collecting like. That's a bullshit distinction. That's a bullshit well, distinction. Let me make the distinction, Sorry. and then you can. Yeah, talk yeah. <laughs> when, what we're talking about basically is is ed editing the germline, right? Yeah. So that those same edits then get passed on to future generations and start changing the human gene pool. And so because of that, I think there is this real impotence of, for justice and collective decision making because this isn't about just one set of parents. The state. What this is about the state. I don't know what you're even saying when you're saying that anymore. I'm confused. No, no, but that's the state is the <laughs> locus where that, that happens. No, I understand that. I'm just saying that. <laughs> well, I, I mean, it's I'm as sorry, if you, you, you act as if politics doesn't exist. No, but no, she uh, doesn't. She actively engages with it. That's confused. her job. I'm confused. Can you just yell it louder? I, I, I don't you, understand. Are you saying, on the one hand, you seem to be saying, look, let people decide, but then right. you're saying the state should intervene. How, how do these two things? The go state organizes the forms in which the decision making of the sort you're talking about will occur. So it sets oh, the so boundaries. So we're saying the same sorts of. Yes, things. exactly. That's why I say we're in violent agreement. <laughs>
Okay. Well, <laughs> certainly, but it's, it's just that you <laughs> hate the word state. I think you're providing no, no, violence. I, but no, no, okay. no, 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 no. The problem is that people who get caught, no, because of the history of eugenics, which Angela referred to. Well, let's also call eugenics white supremacy. Like, let's call it what it is. No, it is. isn't. That's the point. We're engaging it with gene editing. That is eugenics. It's eugenics 2.0. And, and the thing is, we need the state once again involved, but in the way you're talking about, and we should own it. So you don't want it to be left just to the marketplace? Exactly! The, the well, no one, I think, wants that, do well, No, I'm no. I'm sure there's some nuts <laughs> He's not here, so. The, the, the question of who gets the benefit of this, because, I mean, one of the things that people have talked about with gene editing is that it, it's another one of the technologies that people say, oh, this will allow us to put off senility and live longer. Um, and I could see people saying, hey, I'm a millionaire. I want to live 50 years longer than anyone else. Uh, <laughs> let them all die at 35 and I'll live to 160. Okay. Is that a good thing? I mean, it's good for them. Well, but... that's what I'm saying. What is a good thing yeah. really depends on your perspective. What I think would be a great thing is if we can edit out being an asshole. Yeah, I would love that. Can we do that? Can we do that? a lot of people out of work. <laughs> Why is it always, you know, height or eye yeah. color or intelligence, you know? Because the assholes are in charge. That's why. <laughs> that's the assholes are culturally relevant. <laughs> so I'm not supposed to say that sort of thing. I'm sorry. Go What's the question again? <laughs> well, it, it, it's, it's the question of, of, of the technology won't be available to everyone. Oh, yeah. And, and, and does that matter? If a technology... Well, it depends. So I think it's... Yeah, no. I, so, but I think what gets complicated is when we're talking about non-human applications. Okay, please. There's a much sort of potentially broader impact of some of these technologies, right? So you brought up this idea of if you could use CRISPR, and this is these technologies are developed in labs already to use CRISPR to create um, genetically engineered mosquitoes in order to be released into the wild and suppress the mosquito species that transmits malaria. Um, Malaria causes almost 500,000 deaths every year, 70% of which are children. Um, it happens to normally impact the most poor of our, of our world. And so there are a lot of people within these communities impacted by this disease that want this technology to be continued to be developed. And so I think actually on both sides of this black, or, you know, when this argument becomes black or white, like go full forest, we need to keep this technology going and blah, 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 or we shouldn't even be touching this technology. It's it's too risky. It's not right. Like both of those are positions of privilege, right. you know. Yeah. So saying not to use that because you're in a in a country where your children aren't dying from malaria and you have the choice to how you're going to find your food and how you're going to live a really high quality of life, like that's a position of privilege to say that that technology shouldn't be used. It's also a position of privilege to say the technology should go straight ahead and everything's going to be great. Because so far, technology has represented your, your, your status quo and your worldview. It's working for you. So why wouldn't you be wary of technology? And so I think that's sort of what we have to remember, is that there's a lot of privilege being enacted in these sorts of discussions. And how important it is that this is so nuanced, and we need to really think about you know, the middle ground approach of, of holding both, sort of, both things at once. And that's what the state is for. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's not, no. I'm sorry. That's what the state no, is for, like, frankly. To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.